help you on your math lesson. Today, you are expected to formulate the rule in finding the end term using different strategies. Before we proceed to our topic, let us have a review of the previous lesson about solid figure. We are going to identify what kind of solid figure is being described or defined. Are you ready? Let's begin! A solid figure with one curved face, no vertex, nor edges. Correct! A sphere. It has two circular flat faces, two edges, one curved face, and no vertex. You're right! A cylinder. How about a special case of rectangular prism with 6 square faces, 8 vertices, and 12 edges? You nailed it! A cube! It has a circular face on one end called the base and the point at the other end called apex. Super! It's a cone! How many correct answers did you get? Good job! For our next activity, you have to give the next figure in the following sequence. What do you think is the next figure? That's right! The arrows are moving clockwise pointing to east, south, west, and north. How about the next? That's right! We have the consecutive letters A, B, C, D, and red backwards Z, Y, X, and W. How about this? You are doing a good job. The other half is just a mirrored image, numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. In this exercise, we needed to identify the pattern used. Pattern helps us in forming the rule to find the next figures or term in a sequence or series. Before we go deeper to our lesson, remember this. A sequence is a list of figures or numbers that may form a pattern, while a term is one of the figures or numbers in the sequence. Take note, when the terms in a sequence increase, it may involve addition or multiplication, just like in 5, 10, 15, 20. When the terms in the sequence decrease, it may involve subtraction or division. Just like in 100, 50, 25, 12, and 1 half. Now, let's begin with these numbers. 1, 4, 9, 16. What do you think is the pattern used in this sequence? Let us name 1 as the first term. 4 as the second term. 9 as the third term. And 16 as the fourth term. We need to find out the fifth and the sixth terms. Let us use dots to get the pattern. We have one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let us connect the dots.
what shape is formed? Correct, we have squares. Actually, these numbers are called square numbers. When we say square numbers, we have to multiply the number by itself to get the square number. Let us have one multiplied by itself. Two multiplied by itself. Three multiplied by itself. And four multiplied by itself. One times one is one. Two times two is four. Three times three is nine. And four times four is sixteen. So, to get our fifth and sixth terms, we have to multiply five by itself, which is twenty-five. Six multiplied by itself is thirty-six. How about it will be looking for the one hundred terms? What will be our rule? Since we will multiply the term by itself to get the number, we have to use the rule n squared. So, 100 times itself is equal to 10,000. 10,000 is our 100 term. And then squared is our rule. Did you get? Now, let's try another one using this table. We have here the position of term and the value of term. 7 is our first term. 11 is the second term. 15 is the third term. And 19 is the fourth term. But how about 8 and the 6 terms? And the 100 terms. What do you think is the pattern used in the sequence 7, 11, 15, and 19? You're right! We keep on adding 4. 7 plus 4 is 11. 11 plus 4 is 15. 15 plus 4 is 19. So, to get the fifth term, we have to add 4 to 19 to get 23 and 23 plus 4 is 27 but how about the 100th term? we can keep on adding 4 until we get the 100th term but we can use our rule to make it easy for us to get the answer so since 4 is being added repeatedly we can use so we can use this rule for times n or 4 times the n term. Let's try with the first term. 4 times 1 equals 4. But we do not need 4. We need 7. Let's try the second term. 4 times 2 equals 8. But we do not want 8. We want 11. And the third term, 4 times 3 equals 12. We do not need 12. We need 15. So we need a little adjustment in our rule. We have to add 3. 4 times 1 equals 4 plus 3 equals 7. 4 times 2 equals 8 plus 3 equals 11. 4 times 3 equals 12 plus 3 equals 15. So, we can use this rule to get the 100 term. 4 times 100 equals 400 plus 3. Our 100 term is 403. What's these other examples?
Always remember to formulate the rule in finding the nth term of a sequence. We can look for a pattern, guess and check, or work backwards. Now, let's see what you learned today. Find the next three terms, then write the rule in finding the nth term. You can pause this video if you need more time. Are you done? Let's check your answers. How many correct answers did you get? Good job! Now, for your assignment, Did you learn something today? Thank you for spending time with me. Again, this is Teacher Nordy. See you again next time. Bye!